Well, hey there. You've probably always been a little curious about European history, especially that of some of the most prominent nations in the world, like Great Britain, France, and Germany. Well, today, get excited, because I'm here to tell you all about the greatest trauma of the French Third Republic, the Dreyfus Affair. But come on, let's get started. The first question we're going to want to answer today is, where? Where did the Dreyfus Affair take place? Well, don't worry. That's an easy question to answer. The Dreyfus Affair took place in France. During the Third French Republic, it actually emerged as one of the most divisive issues of the time. So now we know where the Dreyfus Affair took place, but when did it happen? Well, it began in 1894 with Alfred Dreyfus's original conviction, and it lasted until 1906 when the French president agreed to pardon Dreyfus. While it actually ended in 1906, its impacts continued to influence France until around 1940. So now that we have a pretty basic understanding of when and where the Dreyfus Affair took place, we're going to want to understand who were the key players involved in the Dreyfus Affair. Well, the first person we're going to want to talk about is clearly Alfred Dreyfus, the namesake of the Dreyfus Affair. In 1894, the French military officer was accused and found guilty by a French military court of passing secret information to German armies. The most important thing you're going to want to remember about Dreyfus at this point is that he was a Jew. Another important person we're going to discuss was Emile Zola, who in 1898 authored a newspaper article entitled Je Accusé or I Accuse. In this article, Emile Zola discussed the ideas that Dreyfus was denied due process and because of this, evidence was forged in order to prove that he was guilty. For this publication, Emile Zola was eventually found guilty of libel and had to flee to England in order to avoid a one-year prison sentence. Another group who was involved in the Dreyfus Affair would be the army, the French Catholic Church, conservatives, and anti-Semitic newspapers who all agreed that Dreyfus was guilty. However, on the other side of the spectrum, liberals, radicals, and socialists believed that Dreyfus should be given a new trial. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your hats. We have reached the most exciting part of our entire lecture. What exactly happened during the Dreyfus Affair and why did it occur? Well, as I previously mentioned, on December 22nd, 1894, Alfred Dreyfus was found guilty of passing secret French information to German armies. The evidence put forth by the French army to convict him was pretty flimsy, and it was actually proved later to be forged. So, a real question arises here. Why would the French army do something to hurt a French officer? Remember when I told you the most important thing to remember about Dreyfus at this point? Do you remember what that was? It was the fact that he was a Jew. So he was a Jew. And the army felt that even though there was someone who was passing this information on, it better served their purposes to convict Dreyfus because he was Jewish. So what ultimately winds up happening is that Dreyfus is sent to Devil's Island. And Devil's Island is a prison in French Guiana that he was basically housed at. Now, He's all the way over here in French Guiana, and the army's all the way over here in France. And still, French information is being passed on to German officers. So now everyone's like, how could this be? He's over here, they're over here, there's no way it could be Dreyfus. There's, it's impossible. So now they say, okay, we need to get a new guy in here. So a new French commissioner in 1896 comes in and he evaluates the evidence that was put forth, and he looks at the case and he realizes that the evidence put forth in the 1894 trial, boom, it was all forged, all of it. So Dreyfus was sent basically for a crime that he didn't do. What they did was they tried a new man, they, but they put him on trial, but he was acquitted anyway. It didn't matter though, because at this point, massive debates had been sparked throughout the whole country, mainly between liberals and conservatives. Now the conservatives of France, along with the French army, the French Catholic Church, <laughs> and um, anti-Semitic newspapers felt that Dreyfus was one word. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Dreyfus was guilty of the crimes, he must have done it. And for the most part, a lot of people in France originally thought that. That was until 1898 when Zola's newspaper article came out, Jacques Cousay, which I previously described to you. That was when liberals said, hey, something is wrong here. We need to give this guy a new trial. 
They were pressing for this new trial. They wanted it so bad. But the secret thing is, they didn't really want it because they cared about Dreyfus at all. They really wanted it because they knew that they could make the conservative, conservatives look really, really bad for what they did. So they were saying the conservative institutions, they do all this, these terrible things. They deny citizens like Dreyfus the due process they are guaranteed. And the kicker is that even though they were looking to benefit themselves, they were actually right. The conservative institutions had hurt Dreyfus, and it was for silly reasons, really, just because he was a Jew. So ultimately what winds up happening is that the original army person who put forth this information commits suicide. So he's out of the picture following the revelation that the evidence that was put forth was even more false than originally thought. So now all this evidence is gone to convict him, and the original army commissioner is dead. He killed himself. Still, somehow, people retry him, and Dreyfus is found guilty again. And that's when the pres French president says, hey, that's not okay. He's clearly not guilty. So what he decides to do is, in 1906, Dreyfus is now no longer guilty, and he's pardoned. 1906. So now we've reached a very important part in the lecture where you're probably sitting back and you're saying, okay, I get it. That's what happened during the Dreyfus Affair. But why should I care? And that's a great question. Why should you care? Well, it was an incredibly significant and impactful event for France as a whole. It was the most divisive event to happen to the Third Republic since the Paris Commune occurred. Also, it led conservatives to be on the defensive. Very sad. Because they had done some pretty nasty things. First, they forged evidence. Then they used that forged evidence to persecute an innocent man. And from there, they embraced violent anti-Semitism to encourage his guilt when he wasn't guilty at all. So they had a pretty bad image in France at that point that they really needed to work to better. The next thing that I did was it united radicals, republicans, and socialists to become an unofficial but unified group in which they would assume the responsibility to pursue the same goals. And they all kind of realized that it was important that they embraced Republican institutions in order to get their own goals put into place. And the most important thing it did was that it created impacts, which was basically political, racial, and religious divisions that would ultimately create suspicion within France until the 1940s, when ironically, the Germans who had received French information throughout this whole affair would come in and defeat the Third French Republic. Well, that's really all there is to say. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the lecture, and um, see you next time.